Welcome to Bulgaria, where rich history meets stunning landscapes. Our journey begins in the ancient city of Plovdiv. Immerse yourself in the beauty of its Roman amphitheater and vibrant old town. Next stop is the UNESCO-listed Boyana Church, a treasure trove of medieval art and architecture. Step inside and be mesmerized by its breathtaking frescoes each telling a story of Bulgaria's past. Our final destination is the majestic Rila Monastery, nestled amid the serene Rila Mountains. Experience the spiritual tranquility of this sacred place, adorned with colorful murals and intricate wood carvings. Join us on an unforgettable journey through Bulgaria's cultural gems. Before we get started, I just want to say thanks for watching our video. It really means a lot to us. We are over halfway to our goal of 1,000 subscribers, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit that like button and share our videos. That would really help us a lot. Plovdiv's history stretches back over 6,000 years, and it is possibly the oldest city in Europe. It's the second largest city and the cultural capital of Bulgaria. In 2019, it was chosen as the European Capital of Culture. Plovdiv features a maze of cobblestone streets in its captivating Old Town. At one entry point into the Old Town, you'll pass through the Hazar Kappa Gate, which was built in the second century and the Street of Crafts, which features artists offering their work for sale. The red and white Martinitsas are a symbol of spring in Bulgaria. Every year on the 1st of March, Bulgarians exchange them with friends and loved ones. They wear them until they see the first sign of spring, either a blooming tree, a stork, or a swallow. Then the person makes a wish and either ties his mertenitsa to the tree or puts it under a stone. The Regional Ethnographic Museum is the house of a prominent merchant who owned businesses in Vienna. It was built in 1847 and features a beautiful garden. The house has been described as a prime example of Plovdiv's mid-19th century Baroque architecture. It was established as a museum in 1938. The striking Hindalayan house beautifully painted in indigo blue, is a stunning example of an 18th century home of one of the wealthier residents of the city. The original owner was a merchant of spice and silk who traveled as far as India. This explains the house's name and the collection of treasures from the Orient that are on display throughout the house. The Bright Orange Historical Museum is located in a beautiful former merchant's house and features furniture and objects from the Renaissance period. The exterior ensures that it is definitely a building that you won't miss. The St. Constantine and Helena Church sits on a site that has been used for churches since 337 AD. The current building was built in 1832 during the rule of the Ottomans. The church features a beautiful interior, but is not very imposing on the outside. During the rule of the Muslim Ottomans, the Christian Bulgarians were not allowed to build a church that was taller than an Ottoman on a horse. Since the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, the church has been enlarged and the bell tower has been added. 
Welcome to Plovdiv, Bulgaria. And I'm sitting here in the ancient Roman theater of you know, thousands of years of history. And this city is a pretty fascinating place. You know, I talk about layers of history all the time in my, in my chats, but you know, so we've got Roman history, even before that you've got Thracian history, and then you've got the Ottomans were here, you've got the Bulgarian history, you've got a nice little medieval old town from when this, uh, when this country was controlled by the Ottoman Empire, and then you've got Roman ruins, and this particular theater I'm setting in right now, this is original, and they didn't discover this until like, I think they said 1991 or 1992, when they were doing some other construction for houses, and it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, the Ottoman history is also very interesting, uh, and the history that happened when they were under control, the Ottomans, you know, the religious aspect. There's a church that's a couple hundred years old that, um, compared to most other churches you, you see in Europe, it, it's very small, it's not very tall. And the reason is because when they are under control of the Ottomans, uh, where the predominant religion was uh, Islam, um, they couldn't build the churches taller than the, the mosques. And I guess the rule was that the church could only be built as high as an Ottoman on top of his horse. So whatever kind of measurement that was, I, I don't know, but. Uh, very interesting, very unique, very beautiful. The old town is phenomenal. Then they have kind of like a new trendy district, um, also with tons of places to eat and drink and great cafes. And the, uh, the graffiti, you know, most of the time you think graffiti is a real eyesore, but the graffiti they have here in Plovdiv is, they have some fantastic artists doing graffiti. I, I could really just walk through and really uh, appreciate the artwork that goes into there, where some places it's just kind of like an eyesore. Here it really adds to the, adds to the place. So Plovdiv, um, we came here for one day and that is not enough time. If you're in Bulgaria, when you come over here, you need to plan at least two days to stay in Plovdiv uh, to really appreciate this beautiful city. So this beautiful theater, this ancient Roman theater here in Plovdiv, uh, it's fascinating. So obviously the Romans used it for different shows, different spectacles. And I understand that the acoustics are just phenomenal. And some really big name headliners from modern times, Sting was here just a few years ago and he gave a concert here. And uh, they said it was absolutely phenomenal with full moon over the, uh, the columns in the background and the acoustics here in this ancient auditor auditorium. Uh, I can't imagine, it must have been really great. So if you're in Plovdiv in the summertime, it would probably be a great idea to try to catch a show here at this beautiful theater because I imagine it's just unbelievable. The neighborhood of Capania, also called the Mousetrap, due to its maze of narrow winding streets that captivate visitors and draw them into this charming area, much like a mouse into a trap, is known as the Creative District, where traditional craft shops and modern art studios coexist harmoniously. It also features some of the best restaurants that offer traditional Bulgarian food with a modern twist. The vibrant street art and colorful murals add character to every corner of this neighborhood. All right, so we have some roasted eggplant and a little bit of, I don't know what kind of cream or cheese this is. And like these red berries, I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, bon appetit. Mm. Oh man, that's really good. So the eggplant is so thick. It's like you're biting into a big steak or something. It's really good. And the cream is real thick and nice and cheesy. It's very, very nice. And we have like a little, like a little pesto sauce on top. Mm. It's really good. And there you go, vegetarian people. We found something you can eat right here in Bulgaria. The ancient stadium of Philippopolis was built in the second century AD under the direction of Emperor Hadrian. It was 50 meters wide and 240 meters long 
and had a capacity of 30,000 spectators. The stadium ruins expand throughout the pedestrian shopping street. The H&M clothing store is just one location where you can pay to see the ruins underneath the store. The main pedestrian area is almost two kilometers long, making it one of the longest pedestrian streets in Europe. It is lined on both sides with rows of colorful buildings, each with unique architectural details and decorative facades. The street is dotted with cozy cafes, trendy bistros and taverns. It is home to shops and galleries showcasing local crafted goods. Nestled amid the vibrant ambiance are historical landmarks and architecture gems, including ancient ruins and Ottoman era buildings. It is a dynamic and lively destination where culture, cuisine, and creativity converge. Welcome to Boyana Church. Just a little slightly outside of Sofia, probably technically still in the city limits. And so this is a very small chapel built in the in a couple stages in the 11th century and then again in the 13th century you can see the the two you can see the last part and then the second part and the first parts are actually built in three stages i suppose and it's very small inside and it costs 10 bulgarian lev which is about five dollars to get inside and you can only stay inside for 10 minutes and they actually set a timer when you go in they only let 10 people at a time inside you can't take any photos or any videos inside so i really thought about not going in because i couldn't take videos and photos inside but it is well worth the entrance fee so when you are in Sofia, find a way to get the to get to the Boyana Church because the artwork inside is just phenomenal. And looking at what these medieval artists did and the painting, there's a, a very interesting, very spectacular painting of the Last Supper. You can see the gardens here are really nice, but a very interesting painting of, of the Last Supper from I believe the. 11th century or maybe the 12th century so from the 10 or 11 hundreds and uh, it's Jesus and the disciples and it looks like there's only 12 people there uh, but actually I was told that they're all there and Jesus instead of sitting in the middle he's at the end of the table and uh, what we found kind of interesting is what they're eating um, basically on the table they have uh, turnips you can see the two different areas here really well. You can see the brick area there. And then the last stage with this kind of rock and plaster. But Jesus and, and the disciples at the Last Supper are eating garlic, green onions, and radishes. So not a very delicious looking Last Supper, but a very, makes for a very interesting painting. So if you make it to Sofia, you have to get to the Bayana Church, pay the 10 lev, go inside for 10 minutes, and just be amazed at the artwork you're going to see inside there. So now we're a couple of hours drive outside of Sofia and we are at the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Rila Monastery here in the Rila Mountains and it is a spectacular setting. Um, the mountains, snow covered mountains just on the other side of the monastery. Um, truly, I mean, if there's a place you want to come study God and, and worship God, I mean, this is it because it really brings you closer to nature and closer to the all-powerful, I think. This monastery has been here since the 900s. It was founded in the 10th century, and it's been an ongoing monastery ever since then. Um, 
It was almost completely destroyed during the uh, Ottoman rule, when the uh, Ottomans ruled Bulgaria. There is a tower just on the other side of the church that's still standing that's original. I think, it was, I think it's from the fourth century. Um, and then, but inside here, what, basically the dorms or the barracks of the monks, you can see all along. And then the church, truly spectacular. There's some great relics in there. Uh, just on the other side of the uh, church, you go out a gate and uh, there's a really cool bakery making some, some different breads and stuff. You can go there, a great place to get a snack. There's a nice stream running by. So if you have a free day in Sofia, you really need to come up to Rila and visit this monastery because it is really worth a visit. some cats around here. And there is the, the tower, the original tower that remained after it was destroyed, uh, largely destroyed by fire by the Ottomans. And of course it was mostly wood then, but the, the stone structures remained. And you can go up, you can pay five Bulgarian lev to go up the tower, but uh, I was told that it's really not worth it. So I didn't go up there. I was told uh, you pay money, you climb up, but there's really not a very spectacular view. So it's not worth it. So I didn't go. Although I do like the climb towers inside the church there's uh, unfortunately you're not allowed to take cameras not allowed to take pictures or video uh, but it was very interesting they're actually having uh, some religious service in there in the orthodox christian faith there's some relics in there behind a glass cover and I'm not sure who the relics are from, but uh, people are getting blessed by a monk or a priest, whatever the case may be. And they are kissing the glass. So there's a lot of lip prints on the glass in there. So I opted not to kiss the relics today because I don't know whose lips have been there and there have been quite a few of them there. Okay, so <clears throat> right outside of the monastery, they have a little hut that's frying up these delicious things called makitsa. And you can get them with, you can eat them with jam, honey. We have powdered sugar. You can get them with cheese. So you can either have them sweet or savory. But uh, this one is just came out of the fryer. It's very warm. We had some earlier with the cheese, with the fresh cheese they have. And that was also very delicious. So. When you're in Rila, excuse me, when you're at the Rila Monastery, go out the back gate, head to the little shack and get you some makitsa for a nice treat. So this is uh, drinkable water, very cold. And um, you can take that little ladle there and get yourself a nice cold drink. I'll pass on that. But uh, I'm sure the water is quite delicious. I wish I had a bottle. I would certainly try some of it. So this monastery is a very impressive uh, facility. And it is an absolutely beautiful setting. I tell you, um, the mountains on the other side that are snow covered are truly spectacular. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Leave a comment about what you liked 
or what you didn't like and subscribe for further adventures.